Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flights in 2020, where I'm going to take a look at Local Legend 7, the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries MU2. It is available on the marketplace for $15 as usual for Local Legends, or $10 if you have Premium or Deluxe Edition. And it is a nifty little twin turboprop plane with a reputation for being hard to fly. And I'm going to load it full of fuel. Well, you know what? Okay, I've, I've flown it already. And let me tell you, it's a little bit hard to fly a bit. And where we are flying out of Gotemba Airport, I've tried to take off from. I've also tried to land at it. And neither of those has worked out particularly well. Um, I crashed into the trees at the end of the runway. It's got a 200, uh, sorry, 2,493 foot runway. And I tried moderate flaps. I tried full flaps. In either case, I crashed into the trees. And... Yeah, so that's not working out quite well. So maybe maybe I shouldn't load it up too much. Maybe then we'll actually be able to take off from that airport. Sounds like a plan. So I thought it would be able to actually take off from that runway, but it doesn't seem like it's working out great. And it otherwise has a cruise speed of 260 knots, but with full flaps, its stall speed is only 100 knots. Uh, so that's good, but you know... The trick is the flaps are complicated. Uh, in fact, that was one of the troublesome uh, features of the plane when pilots were getting used to it. The flaps are super effective, and you'll certainly notice that if you try to fly it. So max altitude, 25,000 feet. Uh, Wikipedia gives it a little bit more than that on the top end, gets it to a service ceiling of 29,590 feet. Uh, but apparently not 30,000. And uh, Wiki says it has a range of 1,260 nautical miles with full wing and tip tanks, including a 30-minute reserve. And here we have a range of 1,100, but the ranges are never quite right in here anyway. Uh, we have five liveries, and that's including the Xbox Aviators livery and the Aviators Club livery. So um, that's not a whole lot of liveries. Hopefully we will get some more, and I might try to make one of my own because it seems like it might be a good idea. Weight and balance we've already looked at. I'm not gonna carry any baggage there so that I can take off and we'll see how that works out for us. Keeps resetting me to nighttime. We will of course take off during daytime right outside of Mount Fuji and head into Tokyo where I think I'll have a runway that I can land at. One of the problems landing at the Gotemba airport uh, near Mount Fuji was that it was actually just difficult to see the airport it's also not an entirely straight runway. I might need some some modded scenery for it. it. Says that MU2 was flown around the world in just 25 days, so it has been used for circumnavigation apparently. Another note that they had there was that it uses over the wing uh, spoilers instead of ailerons in order to turn to do roll, and that's partly because the flaps take most of the wing. You'll note. We've got the flaps down here, and you can see how much wing they take. Uh, so yeah, it's got the airliner thing where they use the spoilers on top of the wing to turn. And it's pretty hefty to turn. It, it's a uh, hefty plane to fly. And I, I wouldn't say it's not the most difficult to play, plane to fly for flight sim, but it's not easy. So be warned. <laughs> anyway, uh, the plane is by any builds, and it looks... Very nice, both inside and out. It's got a nice, tasteful dustiness to it uh, that makes it looks very look very realistic. It's not like super crazy crisp textures. You can see the mild dirt on it, just the right amount, I feel. And yeah, it's a cute little plane inside. The instruments are fairly straightforward. Uh, these are the ones you normally expect. We've got a GPS there. However, we do have a little phone here. Uh, that has just the stock uh, VFR map there as far as the map is concerned. It's got uh, departure and arrival if you want to enter those. And then uh, th there's a classic cockpit option that removes the GPS and gives you that. And then, but I'm not going to have that. Also the cargo or passenger variant. And then there's takeoff config and landing config. Um, I actually tried changing to landing config in flight and that made a very drastic change to plane um, so 
be warned about that too. Um, I'm clicking take off config since that seems like a good idea. Removing yoke visibility shows us that we have our speed limitations there. Got the fuel quality and also the switches, the tip tank and outer tank switches. Those will actually, I think, send the tip tank fuel into the main tank. So you'll see that the main tank needle is going up and the tip tank needles are going down there. Okay, I'll put the yoke back and let's see if we can get past those trees. Uh, in my experience, I found that having the full flaps was most effective. We'll spool up here. And that's the sound from the outside as far as the engines are concerned. And that's full flaps right now. Sound inside and let's hope for the best. Carrying a lighter load this time than when I crashed into the trees before, but still. It can be a little bit squirrely on the ground with the landing gear, but not the worst among planes. Okay, now we can get off. Okay. With a heavier load, it had a harder time. Oh, okay. Okay, I can't. Uh, okay. Okay. It's not pitching down. <laughs> so be village vigilant with the trim. Uh, suddenly changing the flap configuration might not be a good idea from what I've heard. But uh, it's interesting. Stall speed is supposed to be 100 knots. So in theory, we should have stalled right there. But, uh, well, we didn't. So landing gear coming up. Or at least it wasn't an adverse stall. Uh, takeoff configuration is a powerful thing, and landing configuration is another powerful thing. So I'm reducing flaps now. And you can sort of get a sense of how the plane is reacting to this. And keeping relative constant pressure on the control stick. And we are now pitched down here. I'm at full throttle and uh, we generally don't get close to the limit there, which is at about 250 knots. Got a retrim here. I had some minor problem with the autopilot holding the right heading. Uh, so we use the heading bug here. And sometimes it overshoots. And then it has to come back and recorrect. Sometimes it's okay. It seems like the times that when it overshot, I was in the external view. If that is actually a thing, I don't know. Uh, so the iPod's down here, and master switch heading mode on. And then it's fairly rudimentary. You get a vertical speed selector here. So let's go up a little bit. So it's been a little bit finicky, but okay. Plane gets tossed around a lot by the winds. Overall, the cockpit looks nice, but uh, it's, it's weird the effect of the sun lines on the on the upper panel sometimes. Especially the fact that this sun blind seems to cover the the air conditioning nozzle or the fan nozzle. It's a bit strange. And that they actually cover each other is a little bit weird, but that's more a matter of the plane's design than the the actual rendition by any builds. I'm sure they're right. Oh, okay, so we're at 7,000 feet. I'll just sort of try and get level. And on to Tokyo. Mount Fuji in the background. I hope that they improve the, the scenery pack for Japan at some point. It's the smallest of the world updates. It was the first one, and the only one in Asia. Or they could do something else in Asia. I'm still begging for something else in Asia. Uh, anything. Please. <laughs> I don't care about photogrammetry, just put some buildings around. Something for us to look at. It's not like there's nothing, but I'm just saying. Asia deserves some love too. 
So at full throttle and level at 7,000 feet, we basically get to 200 knots here, and we're not full up on things. Uh, now, with us in relatively stable flight, though, tossed around with the air a little bit, let me show you if you actually just straight up click landing config here what happens. It's quite a jerk. I, I, I recommend just uh, trying to do that. It's basically lowering flaps and then it starts really pitching you up. So you'll have to trim down pretty quickly. Now, if you didn't click takeoff config initially and you were heavy, heavily loaded, I tried this. Um, uh, the result might be more severe and really just throw you for a loop. So, on the whole, I don't think clicking landing config over here is a good idea. Uh, just, you know, extend the flaps. <laughs> Basically, just extend the flaps smoothly instead of just clicking landing config. And part of what just happened was dampened out by the fact that we had the autopilot on and it was starting to keep things in check. Without the autopilot, it might be worse. So that's it retracted. Uh, so there's control 1, control 2, control 3, control 4, control 5. I don't know, some of these seem a little bit duplicative. Um, control 6, control 7, control 8, control 9. Uh, and control zero. So those are those, and at least one of them could get me to the autopilot potentially. I think control nine is probably the best bet to switch it off, but actually, what I would ditch one of those for an autopilot panel and maybe a straight up overhead panel would be nice. Overhead panel view, I mean. Okay, so we're approaching Tokyo. All pilot is off and I'm uh, gonna take us in for a nice view. Tokyo is a pretty intense scenery area, but I do have it pre-cached. It's part of the manual cache in theory. When not on descent, throttling down even a mild bit tends to slow it down quite a lot. Okay, quick impromptu tour of Tokyo. Got Tokyo Tower over there. Imperial Palace grounds over here. Some sort of Z-fighting thing going on in the buildings in Shinjuku, but probably as we go closer that'd be fine. We'll do a loop of Tokyo Sky Tree and then land. It's not super easy to turn this sucker. You can see Mount Fuji in the background. Whoops. There's Mount Fuji over there. We just came from over there. Okay, landing gear down. Let's see the extension. And you have to be real vigilant about trimming this thing. Everything looking good. You have the engine from the cockpit. Always like that. I do also have that Tokyo landmark scenery from uh, whoever had the Tokyo landmark scenery. Okay, coming in. Okay, we are down. Very low to the ground. 
sort of plane. Ooh, a little bit squirrely too. But we have arrived at Haneda, and this time I have not crashed into anything. <laughs> so it's an interesting plane. Be wary of the that takeoff and landing config. Uh, whoa, and the landing gear sometimes. But it's good to have interesting planes that aren't just very, very, very straightforward to fly. Oh. So there's a cute one to operate, though I do hope that we get a whole bunch of more liveries. And I'll see what I can do about that for myself as well. So anyway, as I grab a parking spot I probably shouldn't grab, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.